I'm Leo Warder for Kick Guru, and this is Leo Says, my opinion piece for the week, actually, rather than Fortnite in this case. And there's one topic of conversation, which is graphics. Uh, primarily, however, NVIDIA GPP or GeForce Partner Program. We know for a fact that GeForce Partner Program exists because NVIDIA tells us so. There's no secret of that. The details, however, are obscure. We think we know, we're quite sure that we know that NVIDIA is leaning on its partners, uh, and in this case partner in the sense of Stockholm Syndrome uh, hostages practically, people who use NVIDIA GPUs to build graphics cards, uh, you know all the brands. Uh, so. NVIDIA wants to be close to these people. NVIDIA wants to be not friendly. That would be entirely incorrect. Intimate with these people. Uh, so they want to buy GPUs. They want uh, information so they can use the GPUs correctly. They need technical information. They want access to NVIDIA's libraries of uh, drivers and data. Uh, we know all this. NVIDIA's done similar things in a sense with the games developers. And that's also got a certain malevolent feel to it but in principle lovely these companies work closely together this is a good thing uh, and there's no point in uh, liking it or disliking it it's a fact of uh, of the world where gpp has got slightly sticky is that if partners don't sign up for gpp we were told via hard ocp who in turn got this from amd if the partners don't sign up for gpp uh, they don't get marketing money from NVIDIA, that's fair enough, and also their supplies of GPUs will be cut off or restricted or things will not quite go to plan. Which in a world where all gamers use NVIDIA and some gamers use AMD is very bad news indeed for the partners. And we thought, well, okay, so they'll all sign up and nothing changes. And then it's this thing of brands, and this is the one sticking point that's really cropped up big time recently. And the example that was used was specifically Azus, because Azus has the Republic of Gamers, and they have ROG Ares and ROG Mars. And if ROG Ares became uh, NVIDIA and ROG Mars became AMD, whatever, it makes no difference to me personally, it makes no difference to the enthusiasts. You just buy the graphics card that you want, and you're happy. And the news broke quite recently that Azus has been quite clearly lent on by NVIDIA. Not that we've had that confirmed. We're never going to get confirmation of this. But the evidence is from videocards.com that uh, ROG, Republic of Gamers, is going to be exclusive to NVIDIA. And a new brand, uh, Azus, is sort of Aries with a Z, A-R-E-Z. And I hate to say it, but to my English eyes, it looks like the word arse. It just does is going to be for AMD. So they're creating a new brand with what looks like a shockingly poor name, and that will be AMD. NVIDIA gets ROG. In the motherboard world, I can't see anything changing much because uh, uh, motherboards with both Intel and AMD are both ROG, albeit you get you know, crosshair and such like. But uh, nothing on the motherboard side of things is going to change, surely, because NVIDIA doesn't do chipsets. They did in the past, and that's many, many years ago. And ROG, therefore, on the graphics side of things, NVIDIA has taken control of it. And I imagine that Azus is spitting tax. Now, I, I have completely mixed thoughts about this. The first thing is that when Azus first launched ROG, way back when, I, I didn't get what ROG was. I don't... Brands passed me by. Gigabyte, Aorus, I, you know, there's so many brands out there and I... I don't get them. It just means a box is covered in words and it's just visual uh, static for me. I don't much like it. Um, so a brand that I didn't really get in the first place and now in videos. But the fact is that Azus ROG is a big thing. All the high-end products have that ROG look, that ROG name, and NVIDIA clearly regards this as a precious property and they want it for themselves basically for nothing because this is the thing gpp as far as i can see if you sign up for gpp the partners don't appear to gain anything 
I don't know if the amounts of money they get changes, but Azus, MSI, Gigabyte, Pallet, Jetway, EVGA, insert name here. These companies have always had technical information from NVIDIA. Uh, they've bought supplies of GPUs. They've had to have the appropriate memory to go with. They've needed to know how to lay out the PCBs and so on and so forth. And in that sense, very little appears to have changed. Now, it's possible that if they sign up for GPP, they get different levels of support than they did previously. But it feels as though, no, you basically, if you sign up, you get what you've always got. If you don't sign up, you lose stuff, particularly supplies of GPUs. Therefore, it's a gun to the head. If you don't do it, you're, you're screwed. And therefore, the companies are lining up to sign. So uh, when you see a graphics card that used to be called AMD Gaming becomes AMD instead, it's like, well, OK, that's a brand. So I have mixed feelings because in a sense, I don't care about the brands. I understand the companies care deeply about the brands. That's why they created things in the first place. They spent fortunes on this, they spent forever telling us whether the capital letter is up or down, whether it has an exclamation mark and how you should spell it. They care hugely. Therefore, for a Zeus, a Zeus of all companies, I mean, Gigabyte and MSI, relatively speaking, are small compared to a Zeus. The idea that a Zeus has rolled over and signed up for this thing and has given NVIDIA a rog on the graphics side of things suggests they had absolutely no choice. Uh, whether revenge will come at some point in the future, that's a, that's a different question. Who knows? But here's sort of my dividing line, which is this. I'm thinking, well, NVIDIA, you've done this thing, seemingly you've got away with it because NVIDIA is saying absolutely nothing and it's happening. If if Intel had done this, if Intel had said on the motherboard side of things that uh, a Zeus ROG belongs to Intel and you can't have an AMD ROG motherboard, we'd be going, well, that's entirely wrong. And that's only down to then degrees of separation. NVIDIA on the, you know, the processor market, it's got this massive share compared to AMD, whereas on the graphics side of things, NVIDIA has a significant lead. Nonetheless, in both cases, NVIDIA dominates the gaming graphics market, Intel dominates the processor market overall, and then you segment it and you can see in certain sectors there's different, uh, uh, there's a different balance of power. But Intel is obviously the dominant company and making fortunes. NVIDIA is smaller than Intel by a significant amount. However, it is now making a lot of money and looks like it's going to be doing more so in the future. So in both cases, if uh, Intel was to leverage its position, we'd be going, well, whoa. And here's NVIDIA doing what it can. And the reason NVIDIA is doing it quite clearly is because they can. They just want to maximize their advantage. And even as Zeus has given way. Now, is the information from videocards.com correct? At the moment, we don't know. Uh, but judging by uh, the resounding silence from certain companies, you think probably. And the thing is, videocards.com, they've managed to get ahead of uh, all sorts of NDAs and releases in the past. It's always felt as though that website has some sort of connection with a Taiwanese packaging company because they don't just get advanced information about Azus or Gigabyte or MSI or whoever they get it about them all. And they've either got contacts in every single company prepared to dish up artwork, or they've got a connection in a packaging company or companies who are able to give multiple sets of artwork for multiple companies. So that's how it feels that they've got a handful of contacts, maybe even one contact, but that contact has access to packaging for a range of companies. And of course it's packaging that really gives away the game about uh, brands in particular because you have to print the box don't you uh, so I, I'm going to say that videocards.com is absolutely correct because historically they have been and this sounds just solid information which means that Azus has rolled over because they've had to which means that NVIDIA is indeed pushing forward with GPP exactly in the way that AMD told hard OCP and why did AMD tell hard OCP apart from the fact that particular people, uh, a particular individual actually in the AMD marketing side of things gets on particularly well with Carl Bennett of Hard OCP. Uh, presumably it's because uh, AMD can't go down the legal route. AMD spent years uh, pushing forward prosecutions against Intel and they won. It took them a long time. They were absolutely correct to do it. They did a sterling job over an awful long period of time. They were proven correct. The settlement from Intel was significant. My feeling is that if AMD could do the same thing again with NVIDIA, they would, uh, which means that NVIDIA has played it more smartly than uh, Intel did, using doubtless uh, the knowledge of what happened in that instance. So 
Nvidia probably has done nothing illegal because if they had AMD would be all over them uh, therefore AMD's taken the route it can which is to tell the press all the partners all the partners are mute on this subject uh, and with uh, just cause because Nvidia uh, has a very long memory that's just a fact uh, can't really blame them that's just the way they operate but then other companies such as apple also and gpp now this raises a further question why would a zeus roll over and let nvidia do what it wants to do a zeus obviously puts a value a cash value on rog quite clearly and nvidia would appear to have just taken it and I doubt they've uh, offered any recompense apart from continuing supplies of GPUs. So Azus has given them, um, under duress by the sound of it, a, a property that it values. And the obvious answer is because if they don't, they won't get GPUs. They can't make NVIDIA graphics cards. That will cost them. That would be bad. Uh, and you also have to wonder about the laptop side of things. After all, all the gaming laptops, particularly from MSI Gigabyte and Azus, use uh, NVIDIA GPUs. It's only the thin lights that are Intel uh, CPU, GPU. All the laptops that we care about use NVIDIA GPUs. So continuing supplies of GPUs for both laptops and graphics cards, very important. And you can understand that. But the received wisdom that we've had now for months, and we've repeated it on KitGuru, is that miners, miners are taking all the GPUs and they're total swine and we hate them and they've driven up prices and that's horrendous. And therefore what GPUs are left, uh, the uh, graphics card a uh, AIBs have to scrabble around to get and therefore if supply is cut they're in deep trouble this may be completely the case still that may be exactly the situation but it may be slightly more nuanced there's a feeling that mining is on the decline but that might be incorrect but even if miners are taking all the GPUs that can be produced the obvious answer is for AMD and Nvidia to put more wafers through the fabs produce more GPUs sell more GPUs afterwards their business they sell GPUs why wouldn't they make more to sell more and after, once you have a couple of months you know of you you see the demand from mining you think well this is here this is good then you naturally would ramp up production assuming TSMC and um, and uh, global foundries can produce more wafers then you put more wafers through you make more GPUs you make more money uh, but I'm not absolutely certain if that's the case we've heard a couple of reports and clearly can't say from whom that actually there are quite a few graphics cards around both AMD and NVIDIA would appear to be loath to simply ramp up production massively uh, because if mining does indeed stop and it's a financial thing it could stop you know, in a heartbeat then they'd be left with bunches of stock and the AIBs would be left with stock and that's not good but I think that only goes so far because if you end up with stocks of GPUs well, okay it might it might hurt in a sense but after months and months of making fortunes out of GPUs it doesn't really matter too much if you end up with some overstock you always get some stock in the channel so I think they could live with that, that's my guess. It feels, however, as though miners are being used as the whipping boys. Certainly for some months, they were absolutely taking all the supplies of GPUs. That's no doubt about it. Mining would appear to have backed off slightly. And it feels as though suppliers stepped up slightly of GPUs. But of course, we don't know what the fabs are supplying to these companies because they're never going to tell us. So if that's the case, then the rumor that we've heard is this that distributors actually have quite reasonable stocks of graphics cards and they're holding them back they're telling uh, the outlets that yeah you can have graphics cards provided you're ordering proper quantities of the good stuff and that you sell them at high price forget this discounting nonsense we don't have any of that we're selling at a premium now forget the 500 pound graphics card it's a 750 pound graphics card forget the 750 pound graphics card it's a 900 pound graphics card uh, shorten supply demand is high ramp up the prices and we're all running around going yeah yeah there's no there's no supplies no supplies miners are taking them all course prices are high and the consequence has been that we've accepted this new reality that applies to both AMD and Nvidia but for gamers realistically we're focusing on Nvidia that's just a fact of life so at the high end GTX 1080 Ti, GTX 1080, GTX 1070, various versions thereof, but particularly the 1080, 1080 Ti and possibly the Titan XP. And then I heard another rumour, which is that quite possibly the Pascal chips are no longer in production or at the high end. 
uh, which would suggest that NVIDIA is getting ready for Volta, assuming it's going to be called Volta, whatever the next chip is. Because after all, Computex is now hoving into view. So ramping up uh, production and ramping up stocks of the next GPU ready for that would make sense. But it does also suggest a contradiction uh, that demand would appear to be sky high for Pascal at the moment, GTX 1080 Ti, but pricing is sky high. Therefore, you'd think push out production, crank out those wafers, sell loads of graphics cards. But if this second rumor is true, actually not so. The cards, the GPUs that they have are being sold to the partners. They in turn will make plenty of profit, far more profit than they could ever have predicted a year and a half ago when this stop cap GPU was produced yields now must be absolutely gorgeous and they're rolling in money uh, the industry on the graphic side of things is just rolling in money and happy as can be and now it's ready for the next it's Volta but in our minds we're expecting that graphics cards are going to be brutally expensive so whatever the next one is instead of gtx 1080 call it 1180 or call it 2080 whatever the model code is is this going to be like the intel thing where the high-end uh high-end desktop parts instead of being 999 in the uk and america instead were 1499 they 50 percent higher and then when uh, amd produced a processor that could compete suddenly the prices dropped back again are we instead of seeing uh 499 for a decent gaming graphics card and 749 for an extreme gaming graphics card is it going to be no here's the uh entry-level gaming graphics card that can do 4k 749 pounds here's the premium one 999 pounds wouldn't shock me uh the overton window has moved we now expect to pay these scandalous prices for graphics cards and after all you're only going to buy one you know forget sli forget crossfire forget two or three or four one graphics card is all you're going to have why not pay 999 pounds after all you're paying what 350 for an entry-level desktop processor these days i mean i'm talking a proper desktop processor not the really entry level or if you're buying high-end desktop you're going 799 or 999 why not pay 999 for the graphics card uh, jensen wang has always said the graphics is the premium part of your system and this would prove the point so it wouldn't shock me if that is part of this whole gpp thing is to move the mentality along it's to say expect to pay a blooming fortune for your graphics card it's a premium product you're buying one of them buy the right one It'll last you a couple of years. You can play games at the resolution you want and it'll be absolutely delightful. It's uh, That's adding a couple of assumptions and some rumours together, but that's how the new reality feels. And to take it back to why on earth would a Zeus roll over for NVIDIA, if the next graphics chip is coming up, it's going to be a launch. They're going to need technical information. They're going to need all the help they can get to produce the next uh, generation of graphics cards. If it is for Computex, we're talking two months time. And NVIDIA at the moment holds all the cards. There's not a graphics card company on the planet that doesn't want to be ready at the launch of whatever the new GPU is, but let's assume it's Volta. And they have simply got no choice. So NVIDIA is just pushing its advantage just as hard as hard can be. And the silence from them is utterly resounding. So it sounds peculiar to say poor ASUS, but that is how it feels. And Gigabyte and MSI and all the rest of them, obviously. But ASUS in particular, the fact even ASUS has had to bend the knee to NVIDIA is totally unexpected. Really didn't expect it. Uh, so NVIDIA on the graphics side of things would appear to own uh, ROG. And what's AMD going to do about it? Well, in terms of graphics, absolutely nothing. That's just a fact of life. Uh, for this year, they would appear to have absolutely nothing coming along. They might have a die shrink that's going to help things. Uh, you, you have to hope they've got the die shrink that's going to help things. But it's not going to be a radical uh, reinvention of Vega. I cannot believe that for one moment. So if Vega becomes closer to what they hoped it would be, if Vega finally becomes a GTX 1080 that just takes a decent amount of juice rather than you know 100 watts more than GTX 1080 you know 250 watts rather than 350 or whatever then okay that'll be nice but by god it'll be far too late um it, it means that 2018 will just belong to nvidia just as 2017 belong to nvidia and then uh amd is gonna have to focus obviously on apus and cpus uh, which and this is another sticky point We've got the launch of the second generation Ryzen coming up, which is a die shrink. The rumors are all out there. I mean, I'm under NDA at the moment. I've actually received my samples, but I've made a point 
of not yet running the samples. I'm going to start on those tomorrow, actually. Uh, I've made a point of not running them before I do this because I'm basing this purely on all the information that's already sloshing around. Two points there. The first is that it would appear that second gen Ryzen is going to be a disappointment. We were hoping for 10% uh, more clock speeds uh, based purely on the die shrink. And at the moment it's looking like it's going to be 5%. Uh, so to get the other 5% uh, more power required, hence the uh, higher end part is 105 watts rather than 95 watts. The second point there is the number of rumours already sloshing around about uh, Ryzen second gen which clearly have come from headquarters. I mean, either either AMD is deliberately leaking all this stuff whilst keeping reviewers under NDA, which would seem a very strange thing to do, but stranger things have happened. Or people at HQ can't keep their mouths shut, which is also perfectly possible. Either which way, information is everywhere about the next Ryzen, uh, following on from the CES briefing. And I'm just totally baffled by the approach uh, AMD badly needs friends in well, everywhere actually AMD needs friends everywhere because it can't really buy influence so it needs genuine influence through uh, friends and the way to get that is with openness honesty information and just straight dealing um, I can't think of a single tech company off the top of my head who approaches the world that way I might be wrong, in which case I apologise, but uh, may I suggest to AMD that given that the graphics market view at the moment uh, on the gaming side of things is looking fairly desperate, mining no doubt you're having a wonderful time with the new Apple products using Vega, I'm sure it's delightful, but on the desktop add-in board side of things with AMD graphics, it's not looking particularly good, is it? And that being the case, AMD, I think, needs friends, in which case, if I could just offer some advice, it's just try being straight with us in the future. Uh, you never know, it might yield you dividends, and they might even be free of charge, and wouldn't that be a delight? So there we have it. To wrap up, NVIDIA GPP is exactly what Kyle Bennett said now a couple of months ago, precisely what he said, and that in turn came from AMD. So all that completely true. It is slightly worse than we thought because Zeus has indeed rolled over and given ROG to NVIDIA, it would seem, but I'm quite sure this is going to be proven to be correct, and I'm stunned by that. Uh, I suppose we just have to keep our eyes open now because it's not just graphics cards where ROG plays its part, it's all the monitors, you know, G-Sync, FreeSync, and all the rest of it. Oh, are we going to see ROG branding vanishing from um, FreeSync monitors? I mean, that would be a thing, wouldn't it? And that wouldn't be good either. Uh, on that front, I wonder if they do, if NVIDIA does try to push into the monitor side of things and do something like that. I wonder if they're better to lean on Samsung. I really can't see that happening. That would be a fascinating battle to behold. But uh, as things stand, the world belongs to NVIDIA, and I'm sure there are an awful lot of cheesed off Taiwanese, but in particular, Zeus, Gigabyte, and MSI, they must be absolutely fuming. But right now, I truly do not see what choice they have. So don't blame Zeus for giving over ROG and MSI and, in, and uh, Gigabyte for their brands. I truly don't think they have any choice in the matter. This would appear to be 100% at uh, the door of NVIDIA. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from KitGuru, click to subscribe. Hit that uh, bell button so you get uh, feeds when we get more videos up. I'm Leo Water for KitGuru. This is Leo Says.